This story is not only about the ocean and its inhabitants, it has a deeper meaning. Everyone will see his own. A family of clownfish are expecting offspring, but in the aftermath of an accident, the mother and most of the children die. Only Nemo survived. All this time Nemo lived with his father Merlin, but life is unpredictable and everything goes wrong. His father's overprotective behavior led to Nemo disobeying him. He was taken by a diver. No more son. What can a parent feel in that moment? Pain. Fair. A darkness that consumes everything around. It takes over thoughts and mind. And what can happen next? Hope. It's always like a ray of light coming into life and there seems to be no way out. It's always there. For Marilyn, it's Dory. Along his journey, Marilyn meets many different sea creatures who have been both supportive and encouraging, and those who have inspired terror and fear. But despite the difficulties, only speeding up step by step, Marilyn gets a clue as to where to look for her son. It's Sydney. Meanwhile, Nemo found himself in a new environment. It was an aquarium. But he is not alone in this captivity. There are other victims who have become friends for him in the unknown plan to escape. Father finds Nemo, a fleeting hope of reunion that was dashed when the father discovered his son was dead. But he was only dead to his enemies. Nemo manages to escape from his imprisonment through the pipes, then into the ocean. After a while, he meets his father. Despite all the challenges, he got his old life back. Nemo. First day of school! First day of school! No! Dad? You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo! Come on, Dad, it's time for school! Thank you.
We still have to name them. You want to name all of them right now? All right. We'll name uh, this half Marlon Jr. and then this half Coral Jr. Okay, we're done. I like Nemo. Nemo? Well, we'll name one Nemo, but I'd like most of them to be Marlon Jr. <gasps> Coral, get inside the house, Coral. No, Cory, don't. They'll be fine. Just get inside you right now. No! Says it's not safe. Nemo! No! You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo! I hate you. Oh my gosh! Nemo's swimming out the sea! <gasps> Nemo! What do you think you're doing? D don't you dare! If you put one fin on that boat, are you listening to me? He touched the butt. Ah! I'm coming, Nemo! <laughs> Nemo! Nemo, no! Nemo! Nemo, Nemo! No! No! <laughs> Get back here now! Stop! You take one more move, mister. D don't you dare! If you put one fin on that boat, are you listening to me? Don't touch the boat! Nemo! He touched the butt. You just pounded your little tail right back here, Nemo. That's right. You were in big trouble, young man. Do you hear me? Big <laughs> So, I mean, where we left off last time? Oh, sharks, sure. Rule number 25, kid. Never trust those sharks. In the beginning, they seem like intriguing guys. Scary on the outside, but kind on the inside. And so, word by word, you find yourself in their mouths. Half of their reach in a well. Anyway, just imagine a great white shark brings you into a huge bowl. Like the one that took you away, but only 500, no, 1,000 times larger. Imagine. Right, so then we went down inside in the very heart of the boat. Where one single ray of light made its way. And what you think was waiting for us there? Two more sharks. Smaller, but still very scary. As soon as we arrived, something rang and, and the meeting began. The meeting of the non fish Eaters Club. They were talking about something, but I didn't really listen. It seems like there was something about last time they meet. Uh, I can't remember for sure. I had no time for that. I was looking for an escape route. Rule number 26. If you find yourself in a questionable situation, always look for an escape route. Everything was moving quite calmly, but at some point, Dory started bleeding uh, from her nose. And it was the worst thing that could ever happen to us. 
As you know, sharks can smell the taste of that Zaza a whole kilometer away, but we were right on the day of notice. Two smaller sharks kept calm, but the great one simply went crazy. He tried to eat Dory, but, but I was faster. Didn't I tell you that I can explode bombs with the power of my thoughts? You may ask, what, what, what are the bombs? Oh, these are these balls with spikes that explode if you touch them. Well, as soon as the sharks heard the sound of explosions, they, they immediately swam away like the last cowards. But we remained there as winners. But I slightly miscalculated the bubble. Last wave and we were knocked out. Just a little. I, I don't know how long I was passed away, but when I woke up, everything was just in a haze. My head was buzzing. If you ever fallen asleep after lunch, you'll probably understand what I mean. Then, then I noticed that Dory and I were lying straight in the diving goggles. Those very goggles that were supposed to help find you. Uh, but below us, there was nothing but the abyss. Turning around, we saw also a huge, no, gigantic bow rising above us. Then it staggered and began to fall right on us. We managed to swim away, but the goggles, those very goggles, rushed straight into the depths of the sea. And the last thing I wanted to do that day was to go there. It was dark like nowhere else. I mean, nothing was visible. But then a small beam of light appeared, uh, which I will tell you about next time. <clears throat> the endless ocean, a dance of shadows, wearied me of the endless hunt. My heart craved more than just instinct. Fate brought Dory and Marlin. They ignited a hope in me, a desire for connection that defied my predatory nature. I extended an invitation to them, hoping to show that we could be more than mere predator and prey. I envisioned a gathering where enemies could become allies, where the depths echoed with laughter instead of fear. Deepening our dive, I introduced them to my companions. Together, outcasts, we pledged to forge a new path. Solemnly, we pledged to see fish as friends, not food. Trust bloomed as we shared struggles, finding strength in each other. But as the meeting progressed, I found myself ensnared by the intoxicating scent of blood lingering on Dory's scar. Weakness seized me, resolve shattered, a tempest in me. I lunged at Dory. The ocean whispered a cruel truth. Hunger, a predator within, stirred. Desire crumbled, swept away by a tide of hunger. The dream of connection dissolved leaving only the primal need. Weakness seized me. I lunged at Dory.
Ranch Gone. Saw the whole thing, dude. First you were all like, whoa, and then we were like, whoa, and then you were like, whoa. What are you talking about? Listen, <laughs> I need to get to the East Australian Current, EAC. Oh, dude. You're riding it, dude. Check it out. Little guy. You wanted to go through the trench. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine. And he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. Ow! Dory, that's a jellyfish! Let's be thankful this time it was just a little one. <gasps> ah! Don't move. Here's the game. Um, whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish wins. The clownfish is the winner! Woohoo! We did it! Oh no. What is it? Fish got your tongue? <laughs> Love a duck! I gotta find my son Nemo! <gasps> Nemo? Hey, 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 he's that fish! You know what we've been talking about? The one that's been fighting the whole ocean! Hey, I know where your son is. Huh? Hey, wait! They're coming back! Stop! Keep going! He's crazy! I got something to tell ya! Mine. inside my mouth if you want to live. Hop in your mouth, huh? And how does that make me live? Mine? Because I can take you to your son. Yeah, right. No, oh, I know your son. He's orange. He's got a gimpy fin on one side. That's me! Oh, 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 Fasten your seatbelt! It's an ordinary day at the dentist's office. Sherman arrives in the morning to find a filthy aquarium. Curse you, Aquasca! 
There's nothing to worry about. Then enters Dr. Sherman, placing Nemo into a plastic bag. Darla is already standing at the door. Nemo decides to play dead. Through the window flies Nigel, accompanied by Dory and Marlon. Nemo leaps into the sink and makes his escape through the sewage pipes. Back into the embrace of the sea. 